Ellie May's ring. Guess I got there before him. The animal never had a chance. The curse consumes everything it touches. to do with the shadow curse? I truly hope this blight isn't spreading. more where that came from. Hey, soldier. I thought I might come visit you later, when everyone's asleep.
<laughs> Please. We've waited long enough, I think. See you later. I can't wait. Greetings. Quite the cosy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. My research turned up a rather brilliant technique that seems quite actionable. It's not too deep. Just behind the orbital socket. I could attempt an extraction. I've a needle in my tunic, after all. Volo carefully holds one of your eyes open and begins to prod uncertainly with the needle. The needle finds the gap between eyeball and socket. Volo frowns and begins to push. Pain shoots through your body as the needle snags on your optic nerve. I think... I have it! The needle seesaws back and forth, plucking the nerve like a harp string. Oh, bother. There's some obstacle in the way. I shall need a more robust implement. Volo carefully withdraws the needle from your eye. Then, reaching into his bag, he produces an ice pick. Volo slowly brings the ice pick closer to your eye. Now, don't move. Cold metal presses against the skin beneath your brow. And then, tap, tap, stab. Do you feel that? Ha! Huh. I think we have the blighter on the run. I agree. It's a feisty critter. Just a little further. Volo tears the pick from your brain with a violent jerk. Your eye plops down into the mud. Threat. He pauses, looks down at your eye, and recoils slightly as it sinks into the mud. <laughs> there appears 
to be an amount of cosmetic damage. Yes, quite. But there is some mild trauma. I can't help but feel partly responsible. Perhaps there is something more I can do. Take this. A far superior relic to that old jelly you were chained to. Try it on for size. And, um... It was very nice to have met you. I'm sure you'll sort out your little brain problem one way or another. Far away from here, if you've a heart. Terribly sorry, my friend. Ta! What now? Looking ahead. Well, hello. What can I do for you? Then I'll see you tonight. You sweet, generous thing. Oh, darling, I'm hurt. I... it sounds awful. Shah's blessings upon you. What's on your mind? With pleasure. A blushing apple begging to be plucked? Mm, Raphael's angling for the girl's soul. <laughs> She's stubborn, yes. Bold as a lamb cavorting in a lion's den. But as ambitious as she is, Moll's no fool. One way or another, she'll see there's no winning Raphael's game, and she'll walk away. Then Raphael collects another trophy, and Moll sells her independence to the hells. You've seen what happens when a bound soul reaches for freedom. I can't imagine what cruel penance Moll would pay if she were ever to resist that fell bastard. Then we know our mission. All roads converge at moonrise. I was 11 when the Counselor spotted and slayed an assassin who stalked farther from the shadows. I was 13 when she brought word of a goblin warband advancing on Rivington. Her keen scouting saved a hundred lives that day. The Counselor's loyalty to my father is beyond question. She's as steady as Tear's heartbeat, as upstanding as the Sword Mountains. Father's at Moonrise Towers, and we need to save him. They want violence, they want control, they want Baldur's Gate. Who better than Grand Duke Ravenguard to surrender it? Who better than the commander of the Flaming Fist to dismantle its defenses? They will infect him, and the city's guardian will become its ruin, unless we put a stop to it. We can't and we won't. The shadows be damned.
you wish to speak? He is? Then I must see him. Insensible or not, he knows something. I will go to see him at once. Join me when you can. I think the others are asleep. Hi. Like a creature. Pulse. Heat. Desire. Since I met you, all I wanted was to be close to you. We're sure I won't hurt you, right? test that theory. Say it loud. I'm yours, Karlak. <sighs> My name sounds so good in your mouth. to take you to bed now. Hmm. Gods be damned. It's a good day to be alive.
God, sorry. I was in my own world. Oh, uh, hi. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Sorry I didn't wait around this morning. I was just... just buzzing. Didn't want to wake you. Like the dead. The excruciatingly happy dead. <laughs> Last night was uh, incredible. <laughs> this morning is incredible. Every moment with you is beyond belief. <laughs> you still like me, right? more than like you too and, uh, and nothing bad is going to happen now In that case, bring it on. I adore you, you know. I love you too! <laughs> oh my God, I've been dying to say that. <laughs> oh. oh my God, if I smile any bigger, my face is going to crack. <laughs> Pathetic, besotted, and it's all your fault. I guess we'd better get the day on. So much to do, so much to see. Together. Hey! I expected to find lurking in this cursed gloom. It certainly wasn't this. A glimmer of hope amidst the darkness. That's one way of looking at it. You could also say it's a prime target. The one pocket of light in the gloom. Oh, pragmatism. Thy name is Shadowheart. You're not wrong, though. Best we keep our sojourn here to a minimum. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's true then. He's met Daniel. There's no other way he'd know that name. This is just what we needed. Well done. We need to wake him. He must know something about where to find Daniel. If he was able to escape the Shadow Fell, then it mustn't have managed to consume his spirit. Well, not all of it anyway. We need to unlock whatever's left of him inside his head. There must be something to trigger him. A word, a memory, an item. We just need to find it. I don't deserve you, my friend. Preparing to mark, Major. Seems that way. Isabel's in her room upstairs. Maybe I need more pockets. <laughs> 